so hi, my name is Maciej Andzinski, and I would like to tell you how we measured the reachability of .cz domain name servers. Uh, all the hosts in uh, .cz domain name delegation are anycasted, and when it comes to physical location, we have servers in 10 countries on four continents, and there are 13 different locations, mostly in Europe, uh, but we also have servers in data centers in North America, South America, and in Tokyo, in Japan. And we constantly add new servers. And actually, the motivation for this study was to help to answer the question, what is the best location for our servers? And we believed we can answer this question if we know who sends queries to our servers and how long does it take for a query to reach our server. Uh, and the first part of this question is easy to answer. We see the source address in a DNS query. Uh, but from the perspective of DNS server, it is, it is hard to say how long does it take for a query to reach our server. Uh, and a typical approach here to, to measure the latency between a DNS client and a DNS server is to use active measurements. Uh, we can, for example, send ping from DNS server to DNS client, or we can use internet measurement systems such as RIPE Atlas. Uh, but we came up with a different concept. Mm, we capture all the DNS traffic that hits our servers, and we save it to our Hadoop cluster. And in this study, we decided to give a try and to check if we can make any inferences about the latency just by looking on the data that we already have. Uh, and here are some numbers about the traffic we captured in first two weeks of October. There were more than 17 billion queries, and most of them were over the UDP protocol, which can tell us nothing about the latency between a client and a server. But there were also around 45 million queries uh, via TCP protocol. Uh, it was just a fraction of a percent, but uh, still it was around 38 TCP connections per second. So it is pretty much. And we decided to give a try and to check if we can use TCP data to, to evaluate that latency. So we focused on the TCP handshake. Um, basically, when a DNS client wants to establish a connection with DNS server, a TCP session needs to be established. And this process is about exchanging packets. Uh, so what we can see on the server side, uh, just by looking on the traffic on the server side, we are able to see how long does it take for a packet to go from DNS server uh, to DNS client and back. And that measure we used as evaluation of the RTT between a client and a server. Uh, here is an example. Uh, these are numbers for one, one of the clients. Here is its IP address. Uh, we observed traffic from this client on five of our servers, uh, mostly in uh, Czech Republic. Uh, and uh, we can see that what was the number of queries and how many TCP sessions we were able to capture. And basically for each server, uh, we computed median RTT value for TCP handshake. So what we can see is that for servers in the uh, Czech Republic, median RTT value was around 12 milliseconds, and there were also some queries to London, and here median RTT value was around more than 40 milliseconds. Uh, there were zero TCP connections to server in Vienna, so we were not able to compute median RTT. And what we do next? 
we do evaluation of the RTT for an IP address. So we basically compute a weighted mean of median RTT, and a weight here is the number of queries to a particular server. So the, the more queries hit a server, the highest weight it has. Uh, and as a result, we have evaluated RTT for this IP address, it's 17.9 milliseconds. And for IP addresses, we also have um, some GIP data, such as country code or ASN, so we are able to do the same uh, evaluation for countries and for networks. Uh, and if we have no median RTT, like uh, here in uh, for, for Vienna, we simply ignore such observation, but uh, usually it happens when there is little DNS queries. Uh, and here are some results for RTT evaluation. Uh, we can see green color mostly in Europe, which means uh, the results were very good there, especially in Central Europe, in Czech Republic, Slovakia and Austria evaluated RTT was below 10 milliseconds. And in some remote areas, it was not that good. But we should also take into consideration a uh, number of queries for, from each country. Uh, here we have top 50 countries by query number. Uh, what we can see here is that Czech Republic is the biggest source of DNS queries, and at the same time, RTT is very good in, in Czech Republic. Basically, blue dots here are European countries, so we can see that in Europe, evaluated RTT is, is quite nice. Uh, and here is similar visualization for on, all countries, aggregated by uh, region. And again, we see that um, Eastern Western Europe is the biggest source of DNS queries. And on the opposite side, we have Pacific Islands, such as Micronesia, Polynesia. Uh, so um, RTT is poor in these regions, but um, at the same time, they have, we, we observe, uh, just few queries from these regions. We have on the x-axis, we have number of queries in a logarithmic scale, and on the y-axis, there is uh, evaluated RTT. So it's not that painful for us to have poor RTT in such remote regions. And here is another visualization. Uh, here we have top countries in Eastern Europe. On the x-axis, we have servers, and on the y-axis, we have countries. And this graph shows um, traffic distribution from each country over the servers. Uh, so um, the size of a circle tells us how much traffic from a country hits a particular server, and the color tells us what's the evaluation RTT for such uh, combination. Uh, we can see that IPv4 traffic from Czech Republic mostly hit servers in Prague, and we can see intense green color here, so it's, it's excellent RTT. Uh, basically, we see green color here, which is good. Uh, here is Northern Europe. Again, we see much green color. What is uh, interesting on this chart is that um, most uh, like the, the most popular server for Scandinavian countries is uh, the server in Stockholm, and for United Kingdom is the server in London, for at least for IPv4 traffic. So it's nice to see that geography matters. Uh, here we have Southern Europe. Uh, the only surprise here for us was that mm, many queries from Spain and Italy hit server in uh, South America. And we investigated that case, and it turned out that there are some big operators 
in Italy and Spain that for some reason prefer prefixes from, from our server in uh, Chile. Uh, so we, we currently work on that issue. Uh, and some remote region. Here we have uh, Southeastern Asia. We don't see green color anymore. Uh, some queries go to server in Japan, and here we observe good RTT. Uh, but most of the traffic goes to server in Europe, and it results in, in having poor bad RTT. But the good news here is that um, only th this region is the source for only 3.4% of, of DNS queries. And South America, we have two servers there, and it works pretty well. We can see that uh, these two servers um, are the most popular servers in the region, and as a result, evaluated RTT for that region is 81 milliseconds, uh, which is pretty well. Uh, and the most remote area is Australia and New Zealand. Mm, we can see red color here, which means uh, poor RTT. Uh, but the good news is that this region is the source only for 0.7% of DNS queries. And we conducted the same study in May. Uh, in the meantime, we deployed a new server in Italy, in Milan, and we reconfigured uh, BGP. And as a result, we managed to improve uh, latent RTT for, for some remote regions, such as Eastern Asia, South America. Uh, the only surprise here was that even though we deployed a server in Milan, there was uh, the, the, the RTT for Southern Europe has increased. And again, it was uh, because of the case with big ISPs in Italy and Spain. Uh, and some conclusions on, on the results. Mm, first of all, we can see that geography matters, and it's also important how to configure uh, BGP. Uh, but the good news for us was that um, evaluated RTT was really good in Czech Republic and in Europe, which is actually the biggest source of, of DNS queries. But we observed poor RTT in some remote areas, so we consider installing uh, a server in, in a remote location. Uh, and when it comes to the method, um, there are some drawbacks. First of all, you need uh, much traffic, because TCP is not something frequent in DNS. And sometimes it is difficult to measure RTT of a TCP handshake because of uh, some corner cases such as retransmissions, broken handshakes, lost packets, and so on. Uh, but what is good about this method uh, is that um, it's relatively easy to deploy if you capture DNS traffic. You just need to extract some data from a pickup file. Uh, and it delivers RTT for actual source of a DNS query, which is, which is nice. And there are also some uh, considerations around TCP occurrence in DNS. Mm, it's kind of fallback protocol for uh, DNS queries. <coughs> uh, and we also have to keep in mind that uh, GeoIP library is not 100% accurate. For country code, it's almost 100%, but still there may be some uh, inaccuracies. Uh, so that's it. Thank you for your attention.